Wet and wild conditions for the seven teams of the Volvo Ocean Race for this edition. This time down to the Southern Ocean, it is pulling no punches at all. Di Cafari described this as the furious 50s, and we have been maximum boat speeds approaching 30 knots with daily runs over 500 nautical miles. Good luck keeping your kit wet and dry in these conditions. Welcome to The Daily Show. We've got an awful lot to get through today. We're gonna to be speaking to Grant Warrington, one of the veterans of the race, who's gonna be sharing his tips of how to survive down there in the Southern Ocean, plus sharing some of his best stories. Also, we're gonna be catching up with some of the players out there on the water right now. Team Axidabel, Navigator, Jules Salter. But first of all, let's talk to skipper Xavi Fernandez on board Mafre about how fantastic these conditions are right now. It's uh, pretty good, really. It's amazing uh, conditions. We have 25 knots right now. Pretty flat water for you know, for the amount of wind and, and the boats are going so so fast, so well, and it's, it's very good. And, you know, we're going with the J0 and the fastest combination, so we average in 24 knots uh, uh, over the ground. And, you know, we have uh, one or two guys in the pedestal, one guy trimming the main all the time, and, and then the driver driving as crazy as, as he can. Because, uh, you know, it's good fun. It's uh, completely safe right now. I think uh, we should enjoy this because it's going to be just worse. Or well, you say just worse. I mean, you've probably got the better view. How worse do you think it's going to get? Well, I don't know. I, you know, finger crossed. It's not going to be too bad, but uh, it's obviously in two days' time with front is going to pass and it's going to have uh, big winds between 35, 40 knots and, uh, you know, some jabbing involved. And, and you know, I... Uh, start being a little bit, uh, no worry, but you know, it's a lot a lot coming and a lot to think how to keep the boat in one piece and, and push hard. So, I don't know, hopefully it's not that bad, but uh, it's, it's looking quite windy. Now we saw over the last 12 hours, you sort of came down close to Dongfeng race team and there's no real surprise to people as they woke up this morning and looked on the tracker and saw both of you together. Is that just coincidence or is it yet again these two joining up? No, we are all together. It's not on fan only. We have uh, right now. We just saw Axel is four miles to weather, and, and Bestas is four or uh, five miles in the front. So it's not, you know, we we all going to the same place and and doing the same speed. So we ended up converging all the time. It's not intentional, and you know, we know uh, as we were talking before, it's so much to come that uh, it's not going to be about. Uh, one or two boilers right now. Earlier on, we spoke to Grant Warrington, who's safely ashore at the moment, and I asked him for some advice for people in the Southern Ocean. He said, keep your socks dry. Have you managed to keep your clothing dry at the moment? <laughs> well, pretty much. I, I tell you that uh, we had to work so hard in the start in Auckland, the first 12, uh, 15 hours, that uh, is, uh, you know, everything is wet, but uh, more sweat than water, I would say. And now, you know, we've got the the boots already wet and there's no way back. But, uh, you know, we've got uh, very nice clothing and very nice Gore-Tex socks. Uh, right now we are still dry, uh, but you know, we're gonna get wet for sure. So looking forward at the conditions and at the forecast, safety obviously a priority. What is it that you're making sure your sailors are doing on board? Well, we were just talking today. As I said before, we are completely safe right now, safe conditions, but uh, we have to start thinking, you know, and, Make sure everyone uh, wears the, the life jacket and the harness and, and have as much rest as possible now because this is uh, probably the biggest thing you can do for safety, be rested and, and well fit. So everyone is sitting well, is sleeping as much as we can and, and you know, and then uh, make sure we, we have all the safety gear with us and, and, and be sure. And if someone is feeling uncomfortable, just put a hand up and, and make sure we either we change uh, people or Oh, we slow down a little bit, so I think we will be okay. But you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a couple of tough days. Well, Shabby, we can hear the wind and the waves whipping in the background. We'll let you get back to racing. Good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, you know, keep in touch, and hopefully things go well for everyone. Xabi Fernandez, skipper of Mafre, hoping for another good leg. Mafre, of course, the overall leaders at the moment in the Volvo Ocean Race, but 
they have been showing that they're not infallible. At the moment though, on this leg, or certainly in the last few hours, they've been having a good run of it at the front. It's been Vestas 11th hour racing though in these early stages that have really been charging ahead. Along with Team Axinobel, they've pushed out to the east. But then look here, Charlie Enright, skipper of Vestas 11th hour racing, decides, you know what? I think South is gonna pay. He makes the move to come down onto the other side. Why? Well, this high pressure system. It's all about getting close to the ice limit and pushing down into the big breeze. As we roll forward in future, you can see that's where the wind comes up from, from the south, and we are talking big breeze to boot. It's gonna be big seas and big winds. Jules Salter on board Team Axinobel gave us his appraisal of how the race is going right now. We've got Dong Feng and, uh, and that three coming at us pretty quick, just behind at the moment, you can just see them in AIS, so um, it's, all, it's all very close, and we can see Brunel as well. Um, about seven or eight miles, just see their light up to uh, up to windward. Last time I was on deck a short while ago, so uh, very close, and everyone's travelling at 22, 23 knots. So um, we're only really 10 or 15 minutes apart from each other. We've seen some amazing runs over the last 24 hours. I mean, almost every boat, you know, over 500 miles, really impressive max speeds. Is there going to be a point? where we start seeing the fleet have to slow down and start taking things a little bit easier? There's definitely uh, some more wind coming, that's for sure, uh, in two or three days' time. And also we'll have to start doing a few jives to so a shortest distance, which is going to be pretty tricky in, uh, in those big winds. And uh, the sea state's always going to, it's going to increase a lot as well. So um, I think I think there's, uh, there's the hardest bits yet to come. This is just a bit of a a nice warm up at the moment, really. It's pretty easy sailing, pretty fast sailing. The, uh, the tough bit's definitely to come. Well, you be the man to talk strategy with. Let's, let's just turn to what's happening on the race course right now. Uh, we've got Vestas 11th hour racing, more towards the south. You guys sort of middle ish. We've got boats further up to the north. Who do you think's got it right? I don't know. It remains to be seen. The forecasts aren't 100% accurate. They're, um, it's generally been a little more right in the wind and uh, possibly a little bit stronger, which is one reason why I'm hedging slightly more to the north, but a lot of it is just what sail you want to use at what time. Um, and if you, if you don't want to change sails too often, there's a big penalty in changing sails, probably a couple of miles every time you change sails. So uh, it's just trying to get those timings right. Um, I don't, I'm not really thinking more north and south, I'm just trying to get the boat going as fast as we can at the right time. Um, just trying to manage the risk of ending up with a shift not coming as big as we think it's going to come by the time we get to the ice gate. Just let us know, the mast is still the same one that you had before, the repair, nothing to worry about? No, the, the, uh, the shore crew and uh, Southern Spars, I think, did a pretty good job of fixing it up, so we're all happy with that. It's good to go. But uh, same with all the equipment on the boat, uh, in every area, you've got to look after it. Um, for it to be able to look after you. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep a close eye on a lot of things and, uh, you know, just hope, hope it works out all right. Jules Salter hoping that the preparations are going to pay off for this Southern Ocean leg, lest they get a repeat of last time. All the teams, indeed, eyes fixed firmly on what the weather's going to throw at them. And a big change here from the Volvo Ocean race of yesteryears is the ice limit. This has been brought in to keep the teams away from those huge icebergs that you can see on some of the archive footage. Well, one sailor that's been down there and done that when indeed safety was not paramount was Grant Warrington. He sailed earlier in this edition of the race on board with Sun Hunkai Skellywag, pulled a muscle, had to pull out, but I spoke to him just before coming on air, got his tips about how to survive the Southern Ocean and also heard about some of his favorite memories. I was down with Canute and uh, the um uh, Dejuice Dragons team um, back in 2001 too and uh, there was some enormous icebergs so that one this one that we went past was um, eight miles long and three miles wide you should be able to see it pretty well there have you got it on the screen yeah we can see that one that that um, gives an impression so that's like about 200 feet high that cliff that vertical cliff of ice and, um, you know, I think Thomas Cavill's in that photo, Stig Westergaard, Jack Vincent, um, uh, Canute's in the middle. Um, yeah, you know, it was, it was incredible to, to see all that. And obviously the big bits that you see like that are actually okay because they show up really nicely on the radar. 
it's all the little bits that break off, um, you know, <laughs> that you end up sailing through that are the bits that don't show up. And, you know, we had, uh, you know, a watch where you had night vision goggles and you're standing up at the cap shroud looking out to try and see any broken bits of ice, um, which is, you know, a bit of a two-edged sword because you're sort of up there imagining what happens if I actually see one and it's, you know, 100 metres in front and we're doing 25 knots with the spinnaker up. Like, am I going to tell them to wipe out that way or the other way, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a bit of a tricky situation you you know very dangerous obviously and and i guess they're the reasons why the ice skates have come in just to bring that safety element back into check oh well let me ask you about sun hunkai skellywag obviously you were joining the boat on the same leg that libby greenhouse joined the boat a relationship that seems to be working and seems to be paying off dividends yeah look libby was great and uh, you know really good to work with and i think um she really suits witty's style and um you know we all gone got on very well together and i think the thing was, rather than making, uh, you know, tactical decisions, Libby's really good at actually saying, look, here's all the information that I've gathered. I think there's a couple of different scenarios, this one and this one, or, you know, maybe three. Um, what do you guys think? So she's very inclusive and, um, you know, it's a really nice mix and I think that works well with Witty's style and, um, you know, so at the end of the day he gets all the information that he can and uh, he can make the final call with, you know, as a group decision rather than just someone saying, tack the boat now. Right now, third on the overall leaderboard. I mean, what's your impression as to how far things could go? Oh, look, I, you know, you, the, I think the proof's been in the pudding for the last couple of legs to get a one-two, you know, is a, is a pretty nice step up. And um, this, this leg's obviously pretty key. And, um, you know, the double point thing is, you know, Pretty important, obviously. That was what gave Matt Free and Dong Fong the big jump going into Melbourne. But, um, you know, I, I think that the, the team has the uh, capability of ending up on the podium at the end of the race, you know. So, um, you know, I don't know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but um, I think uh, the team's gelling really nicely and moding the boat well. And uh, as long as they, uh, you know, just, just keep chipping away at the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the race, I think everything should be okay. Let me ask you about the rest of the field then. You mentioned Mafra and Dong Fong. I mean, in the last leg, certainly, it looks like they've got a little bit of a chink in their armour. They might not be as invincible as they seemed. They're obviously very strong because they've, they've had so much time on the water. But I think it's more a case of the, um, you, know, the, lesser the, you know, the later teams catching up to them rather than them, you know, uh, getting chinks in their armour. I think they're always strong. But uh, I think it's just a case that others have, um, you know, learnt, you know, their learning curve has been a bit steeper because they haven't had the time on the boat or they're gaining more time as they go. And uh, that's just closing the gap, which is which is great for the event, you know, getting all the boats closer together. And, uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a big plus. Have you got any advice from somebody that's been there and done that to any of the newbies that are out there in the Southern Ocean for the first time? Uh, yeah, just keep your socks dry. <laughs> It, uh, yeah, it's just a really tough one, you know, the different sort of um, clothing and shoes and boots and things, you know, I, I had a lot of trouble when I was down there with um, my toes getting really cold and I'm probably still suffering a little bit from uh, a bit of numbness in, in my toes, but, um, you know, a lot of guys go down there time after time and they never have a problem, so, uh, you know, the more, the more you go down there, the more used to the conditions and the better you are prepared, but, uh, uh yeah, I think the first time that I saw snow uh, when I was in the south was the time that I really thought, um, wow, this is, uh, this is something that's a little foreign to me. And, uh, you know, I, I really did love the leg and the sailing and the, you know, the birds and all the, you know, everything that's going on down there. The albatross are enormous and, um, you know, some really exciting times, but I don't miss the cold, that's for sure. Grant Warrington, ready to step back on board, but happy to sit out the cold weather for the moment. And we are keeping our eyes glued to the breeze here. We know it's gonna hit, we know it's gonna be big. The sailors know this as well. And tomorrow we're gonna have Conrad Coleman back with us here to give us an update on to how this leg is panning out. We're gonna have the quick fix for you in the morning and then 1300 UTC as ever with a daily show with all the latest analytics. We'll see you then.